What's up, Tailgaters? My name is Tailgate Nate. Welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to be reviewing what we just saw week one in the Big Ten. Uh, it really did live up to the hype, but Big Ten football is back in action. And we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to give you my thoughts on uh, these games here. So let's go ahead and get right on into it. We're going to start with the Friday night lights game in the Big Ten. It was Illinois facing Wisconsin, and this game was all Wisconsin. Now, I was not aware of the injury to Jack Cohn. Uh, I do apologize for that. Uh, but Graham Mertz came in and played phenomenally. A redshirt freshman coming in, throwing only one incompletion, 258 yards for five touchdowns. The running attack was there as well. Again, they're trying to replace Jonathan Taylor, but Garrett Groshek and Nakia Watson combined for 32 carries and 132 yards. And Jake Ferguson, uh, just continuing where he left off last year, seven catches, 72 yards, three touchdowns. This one was all Wisconsin. The only Illinois touchdown was a Tariq Barnes 39-yard fumble recovery for a touchdown. As you see the stats over there for Brandon Peters and Josh Imator Bebe, just nothing going for Illinois in this game. Um, I think this is promising for Wisconsin, and I think Graham Mertz is going to make it difficult for Jack Cohn to get back uh, in this um, starting role because he just played phenomenal. We'll have to see how he does next week um, on the road. Again, it's going to be an empty stadium, but uh, Wisconsin playing well. Um, nothing too surprising here in this game as they do win 45-7, to improve to 1-0 and as Illinois falls to 0-1. Now we move into the games that happened on Saturday. And the first one here, um, no surprise, Ohio State beating Nebraska 52-17. to uh, Justin Fields only won in completion, um, and it was totally the receiver's fault. Uh, it was uh, – uh, Chris Olave um, just dropping. Chris Olave got rattled a lot uh, in this game, but Garrett Wilson was prominent. Seven catches for 129 yards and one touchdown. Um, the young guys were there as well. Julian Fleming, I think, had a catch. I think Jackson Smith and Jigba had a catch or two. Um, uh, Williams also had a couple catches, and Chris Olave, you see there, six catches for 104 yards as well. He left in the third after he got popped. I mean, he got hit hard. I hope Chris Olave is going to be back. Um, he, he He's a big part of this Ohio State offense. I hope he can be back. He did come out of the medical tent seeming okay. Um, so it looks like he's going to be all right. When you look at the Nebraska side of this, they didn't play a bad game. Adrian Martinez was 12 to 15 for 105 yards. 13 carries for 85 yards as well, and a rushing touchdown. Did lose a fumble, though, as did Luke McCaffrey. Um, the difference between those was Adrian's was totally his fault, and Luke McCaffrey's got forced. But McCaffrey played well in this game, and when you look at the stats, it really says, well, who's the future quarterback? It's obviously Luke McCaffrey, but I mean later down the line. I think you got to make a decision, um, and I know a lot of Nebraska fans are going to see are going to say, well, throughout this game, I did not see a point where I could say definitively Luke McCaffrey should be playing quarterback. That's fine, but I think that you need to give Luke McCaffrey some snaps if you're in Nebraska, but penalties were a big factor in this game. I think Ohio State only had like one or two penalties. When Nebraska had eight for 90 yards against them, three targeting flags were on them. Two were confirmed. The first one um, did not look like targeting at all, uh, and it was not targeting. The second one was confirmed, and it definitely was targeting, but the third one, that's where I think the rule needs to change. According to the rule, it was targeting. But, I mean, if you go back and watch the play, like, what else do you want the kid to do? Like, there was nothing he could do to prevent it. And that's just where the rule has to come in and say, hey, this is wrong. Um, but uh, no surprise here as Ohio State gets their first win of the season. We move on. Rutgers figured out how to play football this week. Yes, Noah Vader was absolutely outstanding in this win. 38-27 to 27 against the Michigan State Spartans. 18-29 um, of 29 for Noah Vagel, 169 yards, a touchdown, and an interception. Isaiah Pacheco was great as well, 19 carries for 61 yards and two touchdowns. But this was a turnover game. Rutgers had three. We'll look at the Michigan State side in a minute. But this is Rutgers' first Big Ten win since 2017. 
Um, so Greg Ciano's second stint at head coach gets them their first Big Ten win in a long time. Uh, Rocky Lombardi was the starting quarterback over here for Michigan State, 31 of 43 for 319. Uh, three touchdowns and two interceptions. Jaden Reed, uh, the transfer from Western Michigan, 11 receptions, 128 yards, two touchdowns. He also lost two fumbles in this game, which gets me the turnovers for Michigan State. Um, they outgained Rutgers by, I think, 100-plus yards. But they had seven turnovers in this game. What? Seven? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You read that right. Seven turnovers, two interceptions, five fumbles. You're not going to win a game if you have seven turnovers. And I don't care how talented your team is. That is abysmal. I mean, seven turnovers. Michigan State needs to work on ball security if they're going to be better uh, this season. But the good news is Rutgers gets their first Big Ten win since 2017, and Michigan State just seems to fall off the face of the earth. Uh, we'll have to see if they can rebound next week. They have a much tougher opponent next week, but we'll have to see next week, too, if Rutgers can continue – this stretch, but seven turnovers for Michigan State is just not going to get it done. Uh, period. End of story. Rutgers wins this one 38 to 27. Both these teams have some adjustments to make next week. We'll have to see what happens. This was an interesting game here. The Iowa Hawkeyes and the Purdue Boilermakers. Purdue was without Rondell Moore in this game. He did not play. It was undisclosed on the reason why. Um, but David Bell filled that role really well. 13 catches for 121 yards and three touchdowns as Purdue wins 24. 220 Spencer Petrus, 22 of 39 for 265 as well in his Iowa debut. Purdue ended up going with Aiden O'Connell at quarterback, which I was kind of surprised with, but he played well. 31 of 50 for 282, three touchdowns. Of course, all of those were to David Bell. Um, and two picks as well. And Xander Horvath made an absolutely incredible play that was on highlight reels everywhere. He had 21, excuse me, he had 21 carries for 129 yards. Um, Purdue played well this game, and it makes me wonder, well, what's coming up for Iowa? You see the running attack was there, 27 carries for 148 yards, a touchdown that was scored by Mackay Sargent. Uh, Tyler Goodson had some of those carries and yards as well, but penalties killed Iowa in this game. Uh, 10 penalties for 100 yards. Uh, I mean, where does Iowa go from here? Um, you got a young quarterback. He played well. Um, I, I didn't put any receivers on this list because Spencer Petras kind of distributed out to everyone, although I was surprised to find out that Amir Smith-Marset only had two – I didn't even think he had a reception. I think he had two carries uh, for like 18 yards or something. Um, so Spencer Petras is delivering the ball everywhere. Of course, you got to replace a lot on the offensive side. But Amir Smith-Marset has to be a part – of this offense, a bigger part of this offense. Um, but where does Iowa go from here? Um, they're going to get to play at home next week. Maybe they'll swing some things, but Iowa's a mystery to me. Uh, Purdue played well in this game, and they get Rondell Moore back next week. So we'll have to see what damage Purdue can do. But they win this one 24-20, and I was impressed with the way that Purdue played. Okay, <laughs> now we move on to, in my opinion, what was game the actual game of the week in the Big Ten. Indiana, first win against a top 10 team, uh, I think in like 40-some games. It was a 40-some game losing streak to talk, 40-some game losing streak, excuse me, to top 10 opponents, and they win it in overtime, 36 to 35. Um, I, I, you I really don't know what to say if you're a Penn State fan uh, watching this game here. Sean Clifford, 34, or excuse me, 24 of 35, 238, three touchdowns, and two interceptions, which is uncharacteristic of Sean Clifford. Made some pretty bad throws, uh, but he also carried the ball for 17. He also carried the ball 17 times for 119 yards and a touchdown. He was their leading rusher. And Journey Brown, again, I already talked about it, could miss the entire season. Now Noah Kane looks like he's struggling with stuff. They're basically down to their third string running back. They, they, they have to get someone at running back. Now, Jahan Dotson looks like he is going to be their leading receiver. Four catches, 94 yards, and a touchdown. Pat Fryermuth was great in this game as well. I think had a couple touchdown catches as well. But the stats that really surprised me about this game, Penn State outgained Indiana 488 to 211. They doubled, more than doubled Indiana's yardage and still lost this game. 
they also a little over more than doubled time of possession against Indiana. And Indiana found a way to win, but Indiana played well. Michael Penix, 19 of 36, 170 yards, touchdown, and an interception. Stevie Scott's also a hard guy to bring down. 20 carries, 57 yards, two touchdowns. Watt Fillier uh, played pretty well as well. Five catches, 36 yards, and a touchdown, including the touchdown in overtime. Now, um, they Indiana decided, hey, it's a top 10 team. We're not here a lot. We're tired of being close. Let's just go for two, try to win the game. And it was close. Uh, Michael Penix, the game-winning two-point conversion run in overtime. Where do you stand on this? If you're a Penn State fan, you're going to say, he didn't get in. The ball touched the white before it touched the pylon. If you're an Indiana fan, you're going to say, the call in the field was a touchdown. That's it. It was inconclusive. He hit the pylon. It's a touchdown. There's going to be two different sides of this story. Watching it in real time, it definitely looks like he got in. Watching in slow motion, eh, you could debate. You could. You could debate um, if he got in or not. It was really, really close uh, with the officiating side of it. I don't see how there was enough evidence to overturn it. So Indiana wins their first game against a top 10 team in a long, long time. Um, Indiana, I have a feeling, is going to be ranked uh, when the polls come out. Um, uh, again, the polls are probably already out by the time you're watching this, but as of recording this, the polls are not out yet. Um, it, I mean, it, Indiana on the map. I think Indiana is an underrated team, and they showed it here in this game. Um, I, 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 again, I said pick the upset if you'd like, but I'm picking Penn State. I was wrong. Indiana puts themselves on the map with a big win in overtime against the Penn State Nittany Lions. This game was all Northwestern, 43-3. to uh, Maryland just couldn't get anything going. They decided to start uh, Tulia Tungvailoa. He was 14-25 for 94 yards and three interceptions. Maryland could not get anything going in this game. They were outgained 208-537 to and turned the ball over three times, along with Tulia's three interceptions, also had a fumble as well. Um, and it looks like Northwestern's running attack is going to be what's going to win them some games. Hey, Ramsey, the transfer from Indiana, was great. 23 of 30 for 212 yards and a touchdown. Seven carries for 47 yards and a touchdown. Drake Anderson and Isaiah Bowser combined for 33 carries, 173 yards, and two touchdowns. They had one each. Um, kind of distributed the ball everywhere. Did Peyton Ramsey to each of his receivers. But this game was all Northwestern. Uh, Peyton Ramsey played one hell of a game. Um, I don't really have much else to say about this one. It was a complete dominant performance by Northwestern. If you're Maryland, if you're a Maryland fan, this is going to be a long season. Like this, this is going to be a long season if they continue to play like this. Um, they have to pick it up if they're going to want to have a better season. They have to pick it up and play better, but Northwestern. Living up to the hype everyone put on them in the preseason. Uh, their biggest win in the Big Ten since, I believe, 2010 or something. I can't remember. But 40-point win for the Wildcats. We'll have to see what they can do next week. But they get off to a strong start. All right. This was the predetermined game of the weekend. And it was all Michigan. Um, I had concerns about Michigan's offense. I don't anymore. Joe Melton, 15 of 22 for 225 yards and a touchdown. Also carried the ball eight times for 52 yards and a touchdown. Hassan Haskins and Zach Charbonnet were great. Ten carries for 152 yards and three combined touchdowns. Two of those to Haskins, one to Zach Charbonnet. And Ronnie Bell was prominent as well. Four catches for 74 yards. When on the other hand, Minnesota had prominent offense. Uh, Tanner Morgan, 18 of 31, 197. You could feel like Tanner Morgan was a little off in his game today. Michigan's defense played really well against this Minnesota offense. Uh, but Mohamed Ibrahim looks like he's going to be one of the leading rushers in the Big Ten, or at least looking like it's gonna, uh, he's going to get there. 26 carries, 140 yards, and two touchdowns. Rashad Bateman did what he did, or did what he usually does. Uh, nine catches for 101 yards, but it, it was Minnesota's defense that cost them this game. And I was watching this game thinking, okay, Michigan's offense looks pretty good. 
uh, you know what? I'm sorry. I, I should rephrase that. I was watching this game, and at points I was thinking, wow, Michigan's offense looks really good. I was also watching it at points thinking, wow, Minnesota's offense, or excuse me, wow, Minnesota's defense looks really bad. Like, it, it, it was a bouncing act between Michigan figuring out their offense fast and Minnesota just not being able to replace what they lost on defense. Um, I mean, uh, there's everything to take away if you're a Michigan fan. They had a defensive touchdown uh, in this game as well. When Minnesota, there's some work to do, especially on the defensive side. Um, you, your offense has playmakers. Again, they're all three are listed there in the stat box, but on defense – you got to step it up. All right, so after week one in Big Ten play, this is how the standings are shaking out. I have a standings board. It's about over here-ish uh, in my room, and I just took a picture of it and sent it to you guys. So, yeah, Wisconsin, Ohio State, still the front runners there, but surprising names uh, in the front of conferences here early on. Again, it's only one game. It doesn't mean a whole lot right now, but these are how the Big Ten standings uh, are shaking out and the way I've determined who's ahead is either by rank or if teams are unranked, I just think who looked better uh, in their game. Um, but looking at it, Ohio State, Wisconsin definitely look like they're the front runners for that Big Ten championship spot. When it comes down to that plus one game at the end uh, of the season, but everything else right now is uh, all up in the air. So teams, um, need uh, to figure it out that lost this week and teams that won just got to improve on what they did. But again, thank you guys so much for watching this review video. If you guys enjoyed, please leave a like. Also consider subscribing if you are brand new to the channel or you just enjoy my content, turn on the notification bell so you do not miss an upload and you can join Tailgate Nation. Also leave a comment down below. Tell me your thoughts on this video and tell me your thoughts on the Big Ten week one. And as always, remember to play hard, but tailgate harder. I'll see all you guys in the next video. Goodbye.